That could be Bishop B4 is also tempting. Yeah, that was also some kind of my idea just to, to get. I mean, both moves are very interesting. Ah, your idea is King B4, Rook A2, King B3, yeah, king coming B3. back with the king. Now, the pawn doesn't promote. Black can stop the pawn by zig by ferrying the rook back to the eighth rank, but we already know that that scenario is completely hopeless. The scenario where the pawn reaches a7 and is supported by the bishop. So, for example, I could make the moves on an analysis board as Magnus ponders his next move. We have a little bit of time here. King b4 pushes the rook to a2. King b3 pushes the rook over to e2. White pushes the e file and to stick the rook on e8. But even the elegant rookie for Peter is going to end the game. Rook a8. Rook e7, rook b7, rook b8. And if necessary, you can always put your bishop on d4. Yes, I mean, black is completely paralyzed. That's it. Mm, king b4, king b3 is a very easy and instructive way of, of finishing the game. On the other hand, it's psychologically difficult, right? Because white's king was trying to enter uh, into black's territory and then coming back with the king isn't that... Uh, intuitive, but uh, kicking that look away and being able to push that pawn to a6, that's what matters. After all, we wanted to get king b6 also with the idea of going a6. And your move, bishop b4, I think also is completely winning, no doubt about that. Perhaps Vincent can try to squish his rook into a4, make it as difficult as possible for white to make further progress, but it feels like maybe even rook f3, rook a3 should yield a decisive advantage. And Magnus has made a move. It's king, it's king, king b4. It's king b4, yes. He okay, sees super the decisive clean. idea. Mm -hmm. In opposite colored bishop positions. Seemingly there is very little material. Yeah, rookie 2 is played. But, I mean, the, the quality of the pieces. And if one side has the upper hand, the other, other side is so tied to defense and you, you can't really defend passively such positions. Magnus shows incredible technique and now it's really just a matter of time when the game ends. What a match. What an incredible two games. And both players have had their amazing moment in the sun. It was Vincent's time yesterday. But today, Magnus Carlsen showing why there is a strong case to be made that he is one of, if not the greatest endgame player of all time. His ability to make something out of nothing, his storied ability to convert wins out of seemingly thin air. It's not an exaggeration. He does it time and time and time again. He does it on demand. He does it in any time control. And he just always seems to find the one way to put the maximum amount of problems, no matter who he's facing and no matter what kind of form his opponent is in. Bishop h3 by Vincent, he goes for the first defensive approach. And I still think that a7 and rookie 4 is going to end the game right then and right there. Yes, exactly. I mean, look at this. Vincent is already looking at the distance. He is thinking yeah. about, yeah, what went wrong, where it went wrong. And yeah, a7, rookie 8. And Peter, on... yeah, the, the, the feeling he's going to experience when he realizes that knight takes e4 would have potentially sent Magnus packing, that's, I think, what's going to be hard for him to deal with. And that's what he's going to have to push out of his mind. Because tomorrow's tiebreakers, yeah, and, and he doesn't have to lose them if he plays well. Uh, exactly. And the point is that yesterday he discovered this incredible tactic with knight takes d5 from a distance. Yeah, This is the point that there he believed that this is a natural outcome, but here it was so unexpected. It came out of nowhere. It was a crazy construction with two randomly undefended pieces on h4 and e2. Magnus saw it. You know he saw it by his reaction. And uh, at the end of the day, Magnus Carlsen is so hard to bring down. Yeah, after he got his position, yeah, it, it was very hard. I mean, Magnus was trying something like for 25 moves, setting up that position that he reached before the time control, where he understood that he can, he managed to control everything and now he can try to break through. And even this was like a tempo, tempo play. After the time control, it still looked like it could be possible for Vincent to defend, but not with this time. It's so important to clarify that Vincent didn't play this endgame badly. I actually think Vincent played an excellent endgame. We keep coming back to the same thing, which is that it's almost impossible to pinpoint his mistakes. It's, you can't say exactly where he went wrong. Where was the decisive error? 
okay, maybe you could claim the decisive error was bishop g2 allowing rook f4, but let's be real. At that point, the position was already practically indefensible. And that just yeah. tells us of one thing, which is the extent of Magnus Carlsen's virtuosity in the endgame. He can win games without clear mistakes by his opponents. That's what the greats do. Yeah, just the structure. Yeah, this harmony, these dark squares, the way how he opened up with a timely, everything worked to perfection. Unbelievable performance. Vincent. And yeah, now the rest, the rest is formality, of course. Yeah, rookie seven. C5, nice idea, obviously, to play bishop g2 and to connect the bishop and the rook, making it as difficult as possible for white to dislodge the rook from a8. But Magnus will take on g7, and then I think a rook h7, and uh, he could even capture the pawn on h6 using a little tactical trick with rook h8 and rook h7. That'll win the well, black he can rook. also do. Mm -hmm. He can also play rook b7, provoking bishop g2, and then rook takes g7, and capture the bishop. It's also possible. Everything wins. Oh, yeah. Very true. And with 25 minutes, I mean, this is pure agony at this point for Vincent. Just kind of waiting for Magnus to choose the winning approach. Yeah, basically, it's not about this game. It's just coming to terms Yeah, that uh, he was so close. He felt like he believed that he can hold this uh, position against Magnus. But Magnus just shows his beautiful technique. Yeah, rook b7 on the board. Yeah, it's, it's that debilitating inevitability that you know Magnus is going to find the best moves. You reach a point and you just know that you've lost the thread and no matter what you do, Magnus will see the correct path forward. Rook b7 threatening rook b8 check and bishop g2. Rook returns, captures g7 with a fork on the rook and the bishop. Vincent might resign here. Yes, uh, you basically have to design. No matter how much it hurts, there is nothing you can do. We can all sympathize with the pain. The pain is immense. The pain of knowing that you had that chance, it was right there. But it's up to the greats and to the chess professionals to push that pain away. It's a 1-1 score. They're going to play a tiebreaker tomorrow.